This is gonna sound like a weird question, but what are heavy doors for? Bank vaults have heavy doors to protect the valuables inside, even though that we know the real wealth is an offshore bank account so billionaires can dodge taxes. Bunkers have giant glass doors so that the people inside aren't harmed by deadly pressure waves from explosions. But what is this door for? the single largest, heaviest, single hinged door on the planet. Well, I can tell you it's not to protect anything inside. Rather, it's to protect the outside world from what was behind this. Welcome to the facility. Activate the doors. Now entering the facility. This door, located at the Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory, is an absolute monstrosity of specialized concrete and steel. Eight feet thick, 12 feet wide, almost 100,000 pounds. It's half the mass of a blue whale in just a fraction of the space. And unlike a vault door or blast door, this door in particular was more of a shield. And from 1979 to 1987, what it shielded was this the RTNS-2, or Rotating Target Neutron Source, the sequel. At the time in the 80s, this one machine was the single most intense source of neutron radiation on the planet. For almost a decade, this machine behind the world's heaviest door fired trillions upon trillions of high energy particles at various materials and structures. Why? Well, for the future of nuclear power. We haven't cracked nuclear fusion power, but if and when we do, the inside of a nuclear reactor will probably look something like this. A nuclear metal donut thing with magnetically confined star-like plasma, many millions of degrees inside. Into this plasma will be flung fusion fuel, like deuterium and tritium, heavy isotopes of hydrogen, and then this reaction will be used to heat up the walls of the reactor. And then, like a regular power plant, that heat will be used to turn water into steam, steam will turn turbines, and that turning of turbines will generate electricity. But, of course, that's all much, much easier said than done. The radiation in here alone is enough to damage, destroy, and mutate all of these materials around me. We simply have to understand how radiation can change materials before we make the reactors. If the reactors themselves can't handle the conditions we need, then this reactor won't work. That's why we need to study them beforehand, but how do you do that? I mean, the radiation flux in here alone is enough to cause instant death. Uh, one sec. I live once more! It's important to check how materials behave after they've been irradiated because something doesn't have to look different on the outside to in fact be substantially changed on the inside. Like how you were substantially changed after you clicked that Reddit link that you shouldn't have? <laughs> how did they fit that much mayonnaise in? Anyway, so to demonstrate this little difference between internal and external properties, behold, my balls. I got these normal looking rubber balls from Vsauce's Curiosity Box, which I highly recommend. They both look identical on the outside and they bounce like rubber balls you'd expect. However, while this is a normal rubber ball, this one is not, even though it looks the same. It has butyl rubber on the inside, which has a molecular structure that responds very differently to energy. So while they both look the same, they do not bounce the same. In fact, butyl rubber is used world over as a shock absorber. So knowing how the internals can change the behavior of materials, now instead of thinking about my balls, think about metals being irradiated inside of a nuclear reactor. At the fundamental level, metals are composed of lattices of atoms and atomic bonds. The specific structure of these lattices determines what the metals do and how they behave, how strong they are, and how they respond to conditions like heat. As we said, inside of a nuclear reactor, these metals will encounter high energy particles, particles that will smash into these lattices. When that happens, voids and defects are generated. Bonds can change and atoms themselves can be transmuted into wholly different atoms as particles like neutrons smash into nuclei. Just like how the internal molecular structure of a rubber ball can change how it bounces, high energy, 
high energy particles smashing into the lattice work of metals inside of a nuclear fusion reactor can change how those metals behave at a fundamental level. In fact, we now know that those metals will accrue quite a lot of damage in a prospective fusion reactor and quite quickly. The metal walls closest to the plasma will spall and erode. On the inside, the materials themselves will lose hardness and ductility and strength. And we only know all of this today because of what was behind the world's heaviest door. Close them up! Well, now my doors seem kind of small in comparison. I don't have door envy. Now we return to the RTNS2, at the time, the world's single most intense source of neutron radiation. To simulate the inside of a working fusion reactor, the RTNS would first fling with a particle accelerator heavy isotopes of hydrogen, deuterium and tritium, at some other material that had embedded in it those same isotopes, deuterium and tritium. Then, through a specific nuclear fusion reaction, a lot of neutrons would be generated, what scientists call WO. Then all these neutrons were funneled down and shot at a rotating target, RTNS, that would experience a flux of the quintillions of neutrons per square centimeter, what scientists call WAH. That's a lot of neutron boys. Over nine years and 500 different experiments, scientists from all over the world used this to determine what would happen to certain materials inside of a prospective nuclear fusion reactor. And what they specifically learned is that we cannot rely on existing data from previous fission reactors. When hammered by the kinds of neutrons that are generated during fusion reactions, metals become brittle superconductors swell to the point of failure, and harmless atoms can become dangerously radioactive through a process called activation. This is absolutely critical information. Imagine a reactor wall weighing as much as the world's heaviest door that is more grossly radioactive than all the radioactivity released by the Chernobyl disaster in total, and because of accumulated damage, you have to replace it every two years. Good luck finding some place to put it. You see, we need to know these results before we make any of our fusion reactors. It can mean that new technologies are needed, that radioactive waste is far more of a factor than anyone thought, or even that, practically speaking, fusion power isn't going to work. This is why we need to do the science before we do the engineering, and this is why you need something like the RTNS2. This is all fascinating, but if you're still watching this video, I can guess what you're probably thinking. You're thinking, hey Kyle, I don't actually care at all about what the RTNS program in the 80s has to do with informing the future fusion reactor wall design stuff. I want to know what happens if I put my face in front of that beam. Okay, you nuclear weirdos, I know you're thinking it. If I calculate that for you, will you be happy? Okay, it will prove to you why you need the world's heaviest door. I'll be right back. I need my calculator. Hey. If you hit the like button on the video right now, I'll tell you a joke. Thank you. Did you know that they initially based the design of the world's heaviest door on your mom? <laughs> Got him, Aria. I'm not even sure that was a joke. We should work on that. I do not need a calculator to tell you that if you stood with your hand or body or head in front of the world's single most intense source of neutron radiation, you're dead. Instant death, instant fatal dose. You might not drop dead right there, depending on where you get hit, but it'll be the last mistake you ever make. I do need a calculator to tell you exactly why you need the world's heaviest door. According to a paper I found on how specialized concrete attenuates the strength of neutron radiation of the exact kind of energy that we are talking about, yeah, there's a scientific paper for everything, even behind six feet of concrete, which is less than the world's heaviest door, you could still experience like one 100 trillionth of a rem of a equivalent dose of radiation per square centimeter. Doesn't sound like a lot, and it's not, but remember we're dealing with a quintillion neutrons per square centimeter. So if we do the quick and easy math, 10 to the negative 14 times 10 to the 18, you just add the exponents together and you get 10,000 rem. This is instant death times 20. This is why you need the world's heaviest door, something that's over eight feet 
thick with specialized concrete and steel. You can't just let an RTNS-like beam out into the environment where it might accidentally vaporize Kevin, who just happens to be walking by outside. So, what was behind the world's heaviest door? Well, the closest thing I can think of to an actual death ray that, for nearly a decade, allowed scientists from all over the world to safely study the future of fusion power. <laughs> Didn't think you'd learn all of that from just a photo I found on Pinterest, did you? <laughs> You're welcome. Close my doors that are definitely big enough. Now exiting the facility. Oh, we're still right here. Thank you so much to the very nerdy staff at the facility for their direct and substantial support in the creation of this here video. They make everything I do possible and they like the video and subscribe because they don't want to get shot down by drones. If you want to join the facility, if you want to drape on a silky white lab coat, which we are actually making, if you want to see episodes early, if you want to chat with me every day on our private Discord, if you want to see episodes early, which I may have already said or not, go to patreon.com slash kylehill and join the facility today. As you can see, there's literally hundreds and hundreds of hundreds of you, and I have no idea how I'm going to pass the time. If you support us just enough, you get your name on Aria in every video. Lucky you! What am I going to talk about? You know this big door is actually featured in the first Tron movie? So many little things I learned from just a viral image that was being shared around Reddit and Imgur and, and stuff like that. So if you have any images that you want to know the sciencey story behind, send them my way. I'm always game to hear about more stuff. But Kyle, why didn't you just actually go to the door and check it out? Because I called them and they wouldn't let me in. The door barred my way. Metaphor. Thanks for watching.